Well, I finally got word that my new Jeep Gladiator has been built and will soon be at the dealership. Heck, it might be delivered to the dealership today. So it's time to trade this truck in. And wouldn't you know it, right here on a Friday, I got my very first check engine light that just came on a couple minutes ago when I was on my way to McDonald's for breakfast. So <laughs> this is the worst possible timing. I mean, come on. Anyway, so I gotta get this straightened out and figure out what's going on here. Thankfully, I do have the scan gauge still hooked up. So I'm gonna pull into the driveway here and check the code and see what this is. The truck kind of had like a, I mean, it's a diesel, but it kind of felt like a misfire would feel. It rumbled there for just a minute when I was going down the road and then the light came on, but now it's back to normal. You know, I never did stop or pull over or anything and it's back to normal, feels completely and totally normal now. So hopefully it was just a little hiccup, but we'll find out here in just a moment. Sorry, it's hard to work the camera and work the scan gauge at the same time. Okay, one stored code. P, P225D. So I'm gonna have to go inside and look that up because uh, that's more than likely a uh, manufacturer specific code. So I'm gonna clear it. Well, good morning guys. So as it turns out that P225D code relates to the Knox sensor uh, having a low reading. And I did a little Google searching and apparently it's a somewhat common thing. It can just be a computer glitch. There was actually a uh, TSB uh, for that uh, where they basically update the software. They, they flash the vehicle uh, because they're aware that that's one of the codes that can erroneously come up. So hopefully it was just a hiccup. I erased the code and drove the truck for a while and it hasn't come back yet. So hopefully that's no big deal. So the good news is uh, the dealer called, got the Jeep in, got all the paperwork done. So I'm on my way now to go pick up the new Jeep Gladiator Eco Diesel. And I thought this would be a cool time to do a comparison because I've got about a 200 mile trip roughly each way, you know, to go down and get the Jeep and to bring it back. So I'm going to compare the fuel economy of the Ram versus the Jeep. Um, now you're probably thinking, why would you do that? Obviously there's some differences between the two, but there's a lot more similarities than you might think. I mean, the engine's the same engine, the transmission's the same transmission, the rear axle ratios are really close between the two. The Jeep's got the 373, this truck's a 392, really close. Um, the rear suspension's very similar. In fact, I think the control arms are even shared between the two trucks. So there's a lot of similarities actually between the Gladiator and the Ram 1500. Um, so obviously the big dynamic there is just the body because the Ram is a bigger vehicle but it's much more aerodynamic. The Jeep is smaller but it's shaped like a brick. So it'll be interesting, it'll be fun. We'll see uh, what the uh, highway, uh, more specifically the interstate fuel economy is between the two trucks and how they compare. Now the, the speed limit's 70 miles an hour most of the way on this trip. I'm going to keep it around 70. I'm not going to go real fast and speed. So I'll keep it around the speed limit. There goes a guy in a really awesome Camaro. <laughs> and, uh, and we'll just see, you know, what the truck does on the way down, what the Jeep truck does on the way back. Be a fun little comparison. So anyway, I'm, I'm excited about this Jeep. I think it's going to be a lot of fun and, uh, let's go get it. Okay, so I'm going to, I always leave it on the fuel economy display right here. Uh, but what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to go over to the trip, if I can find it. It's time to change the oil. I got a sample, because I'm at the end of this oil cycle. This is the modal 5W40, so I got a sample of that. Uh, 7,800 miles, I'm gonna send that sample off. It's gonna be awesome to see how that oil held up during this cycle because I've been doing a lot of towing and everything. We'll see if that modal oil is what it's cracked up to be. Uh, so stay tuned for that. But anyway, I'm gonna use this trip gauge here. We'll go over to trip A, and that way we can very easily track the miles that we drive to get to the fuel economy that it's gonna be showing. So 
Let's reset this and hit the road. So I'm almost here. Um, not quite as many miles as I anticipated. I've got a few more miles to go though. Dash is showing 26.7. Uh, now I do have the factory wheels and tires back on the truck, of course. So this truck is 100% stock minus the very small little leveling spacer that I've got in the front suspension, but otherwise totally stock. 164 miles at about 70 miles an hour, 26.7. So uh, I'm going to zip on down the road here just a few more miles to the dealership and uh, we'll be back in just a little while. All right, so I finally made it in 177.9 miles, just shy of 27 miles per gallon. So 27 miles per gallon on that trip's not too bad. They've actually got a pretty decent inventory here. They've got a Gladiator out there that has a factory, well, not factory, a, a dealer installed lift kit on it. Check these people out in their cool hella yellow Jeep. So they've got some pretty decent inventory here. Mostly used stuff, but there are some new trucks and new Jeeps down here. Check that one out. That's pretty cool. There's a Gladiator in the Sarge green color down there that has the same lift on it that this red one does back here. But anyway, I'm going to go in here and get the paperwork taken care of. And uh, then we'll check out the new Gladiator. Well, I have been driving for 26 years now. I have bought more cars and Jeeps and trucks than I can even remember. In fact, my family makes fun of me for how many vehicles I've bought over the years. But I have to say, this experience has been the best, easiest experience that I've ever had. I mean, these people at Gupton Motors in Springfield, Tennessee, they were fantastic. You know, all the guys on the Gladiator Forum that were singing their praises, those guys were not joking. Uh, Daniel was awesome. Renee was awesome. I think it was Valerie back there in the uh, uh, finance area where you do the paperwork. She New was text awesome. Message from Trisha. Got a text message there. Uh, anyway, I mean, those people are awesome. Um, so nice. They made the process so easy. No sales pressure, just down to earth, good old country folk, and I love it. Uh, ordering the Gladiator was a piece of cake. All of the numbers were exactly what he said it was going to be when I got there. I mean, I just can't say enough good things about them because let's face it, let's be honest. Dealers don't have the best reputation. I mean, nobody really enjoys going to the car dealership. I mean, let's just be honest. Every once in a while, you find a great dealer that goes out of their way to be friendly and courteous and treat you the way they want to be treated. You know, and Gupton is definitely one of those places. So, I lease this Jeep. A few years from now, I won't hesitate to come back down here again. So let's just briefly go over what I have here. So this is an Overland. Um, in the past, you remember that I did not like the Overland trim because on the gasoline models, I just felt like it didn't really fit in. It didn't have a place, you know? It didn't have any of the off-road chops that the Rubicon has. It didn't have the payload or the towing capacity that the Sport has. It was just sort of the ugly duckling of the group. But when you get the diesel engine, it changes everything because the payload numbers are really similar between all of the different trims if you get the Eco Diesel. So we went with the Overland. It's a little bit nicer on the inside, as you know. A little bit different up on the dash. You know, the materials are a little different. I got the uh, premium 8.4 inch screen, uh, mainly because I wanted the premium audio and it's just a little bit cheaper to get the whole thing grouped together. Uh, but you also have some really cool apps in here that I didn't have before, like the off-road pages, for example. Um, now, this also comes with a trial of the Sirius XM Guardian service, which is really cool. It's where you can use your cell phone to lock the truck, unlock the truck, you know, do various functions remotely. So that's really cool. 
I uh, got the cold weather package because up in central Kentucky we do have some pretty fierce weather in the in the winter time so you know the heated seats and you guys know I love the heated steering wheel that's one of the best things that they do is the heated steering wheel not all the brands even offer that so I got the cold weather package I got the towing package uh, which we're gonna get to in much more detail pretty soon because I have plans to work this truck like a truck so I got the towing package eco diesel engine obviously I did go ahead and uh, fork over the money for the factory LEDs this time uh, so I don't have to get aftermarket LED bulbs Gupton gave me a free duck <laughs> so that's kind of nice um, but yeah that's pretty much it it's not an a you know super elaborate build uh, but I got the stuff that I felt like was uh, important and then I uh, you know I didn't want to have any regrets later there's some things you can just add yourself some things are better to get from the factory you can see here on the door jam sticker that the payload on this one is 1,221 pounds so that's pretty respectable especially for a mid-sized truck I did go ahead and opt for the factory spray in bed liner because believe it or not it was a little bit less expensive to go that way um, so I went ahead and got that hydro blue is the color which I think is a beautiful color. It pops a little bit different from your typical black, white, gray. You can see the LED lights, which are pretty awesome. I like the, uh, I like the LEDs on these Jeeps. I think they, uh, they look nice, and from what I've seen online, they work pretty well. They give you much better visibility. Everybody knows the halogen lights are pretty much garbage on these things. The one thing I don't really care for on the Overland is the silver trim, you know, like the Jeep lettering is silver. Um, but that can easily be rectified if you don't like that. Not really a big deal there, but stand back here and get a little bit of a zoomed out view of it. It's a nice sunny day. This color, like I said, it really pops and looks nice in the sunlight. So there she is. Now what we're gonna do is drive it back to Kentucky and see if it can get 27 miles per gallon to match what the Ram did on the way down here. All right, got the air conditioning rolling here. It says it's 70 outside, but it's really closer to about 90. Uh, it'll update when I head out down the road. But anyway, I'm gonna reset this and we will hit the road and uh, see where we end up. It's gonna be interesting to see how the Jeep ends up comparing, but Hopefully, we can do even better. Be back in a little while. So I'm stopped here at a rest area real quick, but I was just going back through the video because I had already forgotten. The Ram was getting 27, right at 27 miles per gallon on this trip. So actually, this Jeep is doing six miles per gallon better. Uh, I'm about 85 and a half miles in now and still showing 33 miles per gallon here so this thing is knocking it down i mean this is just unbelievable mileage all things considered here today can't wait to get it home and see where we finish up but i'm thinking it's probably gonna stick around this ballpark from here on um, you know at this point it's probably leveled out pretty good but anyway um, i'll be back in a little bit with another update i just think that this is fantastic all right, so I'm almost back home again. Decided to pull over here at a uh, safe little parking area, parking rod to uh, shoot another clip for you. So 176 miles so far on the way back, 32.2 uh, miles per gallon. So once I got home, it has kind of settled in to five miles per gallon better than what the Ram was doing with the, again, the same engine, same transmission, very similar axle ratio, you know, so I'm really surprised by this. You know, the Jeep obviously is a little bit smaller, but like I said, it's shaped like a brick. You know, there's nothing aerodynamic about a Jeep. So this is a very interesting result. Um, I have to hand calculate and see if the dash display is accurate on these Jeeps. Um, so take that with a grain of salt. But so far, it does look like that this Jeep is going to consume less fuel than what the Ram did. So Hey, it's a great start. Made it home okay. Um, can't wait to uh, dig into this thing and and uh, <laughs> start the build. Oh yeah, there goes the uh, automatic start stop. 
that's something else that the Jeep has that the Ram does not. Um, automatic start stop, which a lot of people hate, but personally, I kind of like it. All right, guys, I'm going to head on to the house, and we'll wrap this video up when I get there. Well, it's been a long day, but I finally made it back home. You know, this thing is, uh, I'm still really surprised. We just took it down to Frankfurt and back, which is about a 20 minute drive and back. And it's still showing over 31 miles per gallon on the dash. Now I know it's going to go down from there. Surely that's not going to be the average. That long highway trip I took today really padded those numbers, but the fuel economy on this thing already is really surprising me. So major benefit there. Plus the torque output is sweet. I'm liking those LED lights. I mean, it's just a nice vehicle. So pretty soon I'm going to get started on converting this thing. Uh, well, I'm not really converting it, but adding a few things to it so that I can pull that trailer over there. You know, the Jeep is even more narrow than the Ram, obviously. So I've got to get some clip on towing mirrors, got to get some kind of a trailer brake controller. And I think I'm going to go with a uh, weight distribution system this time which is something that I've never done before, but I think I'm gonna try that. And I'll be discussing all that in the next video, but that's uh, job number one is to get this thing ready to tow because it's summertime. We've gotta go hit the off-road trails, go camping. And I wanna make sure this thing is ready to tow and ready to do it safely. But anyway, as you can see, the sun's going down. So I'm gonna go back in the house and call it a day. I appreciate you guys watching and uh, there'll be more coming obviously. So. If you like the channel subscribe if you haven't already and those of you who already did thanks a lot i really appreciate it